What's up guys, Kelly here. Welcome back to another game on the Gwynology account. This time we're up against Jax. Runes should be on screen now and we have a lot to talk about. Uh, first off, I'm still sponsored by Raid till October 31st. Download the game below if you want to help me out in any way, shape, or form. But anyways, um, they are about to ruin Gwen as a champion and I am doing whatever I can to help mitigate that and hopefully this can be shown to some rioter or to anyone that uh can do anything about this but basically um Gwen has been pretty strong all throughout the split which I did predict I thought she would be one of the strongest champions of the game and she was and I thought they would nerf her preemptively um before the split came out and they did not so Gwen has run amok and they thought that the way to nerf her was just by completely gutting her passive to go down to 6% from 7.1 and originally at the start of the season it was 8%. Now they were going to do an 8% change to 6.5% change at the start of the season and it was so bad that they hotfix buffed her to 7.1 I believe it was and they are just repeating the process again and I really don't understand why they would not see this coming. Their entire reasoning is the build you are seeing right here, full AP Gwen. That's what we are going first strike with full scaling runes, and we're just going to try to one-shot the enemy team. But the thing about it is that they think that nerfing her passive, the thing that she uses in extended fights and burst fights, is going to make us go full AP. All this does is incentivize us to go full AP, because if we were to do the bruiser build, which I found out today was what this nerf was tailored towards, they think that we will be able to still play extended fights with a weaker passive and less healing because our passive gives us percent max health and then it heals half of the damage we're dealing. But if we're dealing less percent max health damage, we're healing less, so we just can't win extended fights anymore. All this is doing is forcing us into this full AP playstyle, which I typically don't enjoy. I feel like these videos like the full AP ones, are very skewed because I tried to use my videos to help you guys improve. And a lot of this is just like, oh, you have to have so much game knowledge to position properly. And yeah, the W helps, but it's just more efficient and better to learn the game if you're playing Bruiser. And these nerfs just say, we want you to play Bruiser, but we're nerfing Bruiser harder than full AP. So go play Bruiser and get a lower win rate in your ranked games go completely lose 10 games in a row and just have it be the patch's fault and there's such an easy solution i don't know why riot didn't see it it's just give gwen a bonus hp scaling on her passive that incentivizes you to build things like jack show like rift maker the bruiser items that they want us to build this entire time it doesn't have to be crazy but maybe continue with this nerf right the the full nerf and then use m your mathematics mathematical skills to bring the bonus hp scaling to around the 7.1 range which your passive currently is right like after rift maker jack shows and you have double hp runes right just have it be the baseline that it is on current patch because that incentivizes you to play bruiser and it makes full AP much less incentivized. It is so easy to do this, and I'm just trying to make this video as fast as I can. And I also made a tweet, so I'll put the tweet below if you can just retweet it. Just if we can get any rioter to just consider like looking at it. Because I feel like that next patch, if this does not get either hot fixed or changed before the patch goes live, Gwen is just going to be in an unplayable state and it's crazy coming from me because everyone at the start of the season was such a doomer when the patch happened where she Gwen lost 1.5 percent of her passive per 100 ap and i said it's fine we just need to adapt and that's what i did but i feel like this time it's actually just completely dire all right but with that out of the way um this build, this is the reason that Gwen is getting nerfed, and the whole concept is you are sacking your laning phase, basically, to 
accelerate yourself to items and utilize the cashback and first strike gold to get to full build as quick as possible. Now, I think that this build will become the mandatory if no changes are made on the patch. You will either run this page or you will run Conqueror with the same sorcery runes because you will just need so much AP to make up for the changes that are coming that it's kind of unreasonable. Like, you have to basically hit a thousand AP. Jack's there, he doesn't have flash, thanks to Arjana, so he will fall. But, it's just kind of crazy that history is repeating itself, and they know they messed up the first time this happened, because they made an emergency change to Gwen's passive. Like, I cannot believe they didn't see this before. Anyways, Amumu gonna start his Void Grubs. They're gonna help out. And sorry if I'm, like, rambling or, like, talking fast, but I'm just trying to get all these points across at the start of the video because I know, like, not everyone watches the full video. I never expect anyone to watch the full video. So I wanted to get all of these things out at the very start. As well as talk about Freak's opinions on Gwen, because I feel like these are very bad takes of Gwen. Um, I'll throw the throw them up on screen. I, they're just going to be on notepad. But the first one is Gwen takes skill. She does require skill, but that's like saying you're required to know damage numbers on Garenault. Like, yeah, it's very common for you to know how your champion abilities work. Like, she is not a hard champion. She has some very fun and unique mechanics, but that does not skew her to something like an Irelia or a Riven tier of difficulty. Like, she has a depth to her that you can pick up in about 25 games or so. And I know because that's what made me love the character, just playing my first 20 games of the champion coming out, and I felt like I had a very good grasp of how this champion functioned within those games. And at this time, I was not high elo. I was like plat four peak. So this is not a like high elo take. This is a take from someone that is around the general skill level of most people in the game. Maybe a bit higher, but you know, not high elo. But the other one is that Gwen has a bad laning phase, and I don't know how you could ever consider this champion having a bad laning phase. There are bad matchups, obviously. It's top lane. There's terrible matchups in the game. But her having a bad laning phase is just completely idiotic and illogical. Like, there's so many things that make Gwen an amazing laning phase champion. From her W to her E giving her extra range as well as counting as a dash to dodge enemy skill shots. And then if you hit a center spot Q, they're just getting melted. So I don't know how we can go about saying that her passive is the problem, but also saying her laning phase is bad, and it just feels like they don't know what Gwen is in League of Legends. Like, she is a strong lane bully in multiple matchups. We're going to die there, unfortunately. Bush diff. She, she's a strong early game bully in multiple, multiple lanes, and yeah, she has bad matchups, but then the late game happens and she makes up for that in the bad lanes. And then, finally, Freak says something correct, strong late game. Yes, everyone can agree, Gwen has probably one of the strongest laning phases, or sorry, one of the strongest uh, late games in the entire game. Like, there, I can only think of, like, a handful of champions that can actually outscale her, and one of them is Aurelian Soul, like an infinitely scaling champion. And then again, we, we talked about this like at the very start of the game. We're nerfing her passive damage to nerf full AP. This does not change the fact that full AP is the way to go. Because you are nerfing her passive by so much that now she can't win the extended fights and heal through them because she's just not dealing enough damage. Like, I do not think that last stand will even be a rune on her next patch because you're just not going to be healing nearly as much as you need to to win these extended fights against other bruisers or, heck, even maybe 
a, a in a team fight you can't heal through a tank like it's crazy to think that but i'm really worried about riot handling gwen this next patch because it just feels like they don't understand why gwen is good and what makes her good and how to fix her i really feel like the solution is just giving her a bonus hp scaling on her passive and i i really hope like those that really enjoy this champion because this is my favorite champion in like any video game ever i'm hoping you guys can just share and we can find someone with some amount of power to just be like hey this is an idea what do we think to, to the other riot devs because I'm really worried that this champion will just not function as they want her to. And it's going to come to the point where there's no point in playing Gwen. Because right now it's a pretty decent tank meta. And that's why Gwen was so strong to begin with. When it's tank meta, it's Gwen meta. And I say this every single time it happens. And it feels like every single time it does become a tank meta, Gwen is punished very very harshly where it could just be a little bit less you know like it does not need to be this hard or the meta just needs to shift once if this meta was bruiser and assassin oriented this nerf would never happen like obviously right but what i'm saying is just like let it marinate let the patch the patches go like let everyone figure out the patches we're like three weeks into the split at this point and i held off on making this video for a couple days because i really thought that they would just make a change on the patches on the patch that's coming through on the numbers and they just are not budging and it's very worrying as a gwen player and as a youtuber for the character because I don't want to make videos like this if you guys cannot climb. These, are, This is why I like making these videos. I love teaching. I love showing people how to play the game with a champion I adore. And that's just not going to be feasible if they got her to the point where you cannot reasonably get a 51% win rate. Because that's what I want the goal to be for you guys watching this for those coaching for the coaching sessions I do, I want you to have a 51% win rate or higher so you can actually climb. And I just don't see that happening with these changes. Because this affects, his, affects her Q, her auto attack, so technically her E, and her ult. So all we can do is really rely on our base damage and other attributes. So like Nasher's Tooth on hit effect, Lich Bane on hit effect, Storm Surge proc. And it's like, that's not what they want us to do. They want us to go to Nashers. They want us to go Riftmaker into a defensive AP item like Sonya's Hourglass or a Banshee's Veil. I'm still a big fan of Jack shows on Gwen. It's just there hasn't been a reason to because of the full AP builds. And they're just disinteresting everyone in the Bruiser builds and just forcing us into these full AP builds that have the items deal the damage now, not the champion, which is crazy to me because Split 3 was all about the champion's core identity. Like, they want the champions to matter, not the items. Doing this change makes it so the items that she's building matter, makes it so that Lich proc matters, Storm Surge proc matters, Shadow Flame crit damage matters. And that is just completely the opposite of what they want the split to be. They are just backpedaling on the entire split as a whole with a change like this. Alright, but to get back more into the game, we've just been playing a very standard laning phase. We procced first strike as much as we can. And th this or the Conqueror page with the same secondary tree are the two ways I for C Gwen being played. And I think this build will be kind of forced on you guys. Right here, Jax is going to try to jump in. Rom's going to fall as well. But the build, um, it's going to typically look like Nashers. You pick up a Dark Seal if it's a pretty TDM game. Um, go into the Death Cap, into Imaginations like Shadow Flame, Void Staff if they're stacking MR. Uh, Lich Bane, 
typically I sell for boots. And another thing about boots is that Sorks are losing three magic pen. So all the mages are getting screwed next patch as well. And I really don't know why they're hurting them so much. And it's just kind of weird that they're hammering down on a lot of things all at once. Like, if you guys um, look at the patch notes when they go live, or if you just check Twitter, they are nerfing over 10% of League of Legends champions. Like, it, they're all pretty directed towards scaling. But Wen and Kai'Sa are the biggest nerfs by far. Like, I don't know what Kai'Sa players are going to do next patch either. Um, Probably some AD carry players that are smarter than I am at the role will uh, figure it out. But they just hit the hammer really hard on these two specific champions. And then some solid nerfs here and there across the board for others. Like, Yon lost 1% max health on his W. Like, that is it. Alright, we're pretty fed at this point. Just due to the fact that we have first strike and cash back giving us so much money. I really, really still wish that they had the old first strike. Um... Because this was my favorite build, but due to the new first strike, I, I really hate this setup. I don't want to build like this next patch, but I feel like I'm going to be forced to. Because Riot is enticing me to, because they don't want Bruiser Gwen to pro prosper. Even though they say they do, these changes just not make it seem that way. We got 300 there, and then we got 396 from there, so 700 gold. Convert that to AP, that's around 30, 35 ish AP right now. As well as we're running Jack of All Trades, which at five stacks, which is the one the one we're shooting for, gives us 10 AP, so 200 gold worth of AP. Right here, Kais isn't going to be in the top lane with us. She actually does not see me thankfully go into there. She thinks I'm still in the first bush. I don't know why she would walk up so far if she thought I was in the first bush, but she will just fall. Yeah, this is what next patch is going to be like. You're going to play for full one-shots, and you are typically not going to be able to one-shot unless you have a massive lead like this, unless you have full tower dead, two items when everyone else has one, and you just completely accelerate yourself that's what i try to teach with these uh types of videos but the problem with first strike is that it's not consistent the way i like to show how to win is through consistent copy paste gameplay that anyone can follow regardless of skill level or game knowledge well obviously watch the videos you learn how to play like this but first strike re requires you to when flip trades, do you hit them first? Yes, you get 10 gold. Do they hit you first? Ah, uh, minus 10 gold. And you just repeat that process throughout the entire laning phase, and you either got a lot of money and you get Nashers early enough to accelerate like this, or you didn't. So now you're out of luck because you don't really have a rune. Also, this rune does actually do what Freak thinks. Of Gwen and that is give her a bad laning phase. Um, the procs are a nice little rush of dopamine but they are by no means stronger than Conqueror especially early. We need to get about 850 gold worth of AP so about 45 to match a 12 stack Conqueror not to mention Conqueror does heal you. It doesn't usually heal by much for me especially since I would play like Nasher's Shadow Flame. But you can have games where it heals you thousands. So you need to hit the 850 gold mark on first strike and cash back to match the value of Conqueror. And it takes so much time for you to get to that point where you just can't really laning do a laning phase top lane without it. Compared to something like a Darius with Conqueror or a Garen with Phase Rush. Like, you can't beat those champions anymore. Even though, previously, you run Conqueror, you do have some ground, right? Like, you can hold your own in those lanes, and you can even find solo kills. But, 
if you're forced to rush, rush first, or sorry, not rush, take first strike, like they are forcing us to next batch if these go through, then we're out of luck for a lot of lanes where they were even or even winning. And it just kind of sucks. Alright, but here, like I said, we accelerated ourselves really, really hard. Jax isn't even at two items yet. I believe he just reset to get his wits end. And we have three items, ten Dark Seal stacks. We have 608 AP. So here, we're going to go for tier two, like we always do. The game plan is same as always, even though we don't have a uh, combat rune, sort, sort of say. We have more of a poke rune. But get the t two side... Sorry, the two side lane tier 2 towers. <laughs> but there's going to be some action over by the Baron, and that tells me, okay, I'm allowed to keep pushing because we just soloed Jax. They did not expect us to do that under his tower. And we're going to be able to just get this for free because we still see Kaisa, we still see Vayne. Kaisa's finally realizing what's happening, but at this point it's just too late for her to respond to us before we get this inhibitor. So here we're going to just go snag Krugs. I was thinking about snagging even more to get level 16, but I do believe that I do Krugs, chill out in a bush for a minute, and then just pick up the wave to get my level 16. Here I'm just walking towards my minions in case Kaisa throws out a W like this. Just make sure I don't need to waste my W on her spell. Alright, but here we're going to get Magi's, sell the Amp Tome. Get the large rod. 690 AP at 23 minutes with about 1100 gold gain, 523 here, and then 666 on the cash back. That's pretty funny. And then just the raw AP from Gathering Storm, Absolute Focus, and Jack of All Trades. And then here, we're going to end up catching out the Braum and the J4. Braum's going to stay behind to take the J4's mistake on the chin, and Vayne is going to get absolutely one shot. Now at this point, if it's next patch, the nerf does nothing, right? Like, look at our build, and look at the enemy builds. But in a even game, you're going to deal, like, next to no damage. And if it's an even game, typically you don't have as many first strike procs as I do throughout this game. And it's just very, very hard to uh, do anything, you know? Like, I remember when Season 14 started and that first nerf happened. It, it felt really awful, but I adjusted, I learned. But a lot of OTPs just kind of... Not gave up on the champion, but just gave up until the patch fixed it, fixed her. And thankfully, that's what Riot did a couple days after. But it's just really odd that they're repeating this process. I'm gonna pick up the Shadow Flame here, gonna pick up a potion. We have 866 AP. Here I try to bring my team over here, but unfortunately, either Irelia or the Jana got caught out on their recalls, and the other stayed, so they both die for it. Here, looking back, I should have saved my ulti, because I don't even get him, unfortunately. Which is a little sad, but you guys that watch me consistently know that I cannot land my needles. And since I used my W in a pretty poor way, I am going to fall here. Yeah, again, sorry if this is a more, like, doom and gloom video, but I feel like it just needs to be because I want you guys to understand how bad of a change this is and hope that some of you share it around and hopefully it gets some traction so that we can get Gwen saved, basically. I don't want this to become the norm. I really don't want this build to become the norm, but if nothing is done... This will unfortunately become the copy-paste thing you have to do. And you will either get enough money off first strike, or 
you didn't proc it enough times and you just deserve to lose the game, I guess, is what Riot's thinking. Also, when I pop, I believe I'll probably pop up the notepad I made of just like what Freak's takes were. The small scope change um, basically is was defined to him as like a, a band-aid change where they think that much more has to be done on Gwen. Here, we're going to get a beautiful triple kill. But like much more has to be done on Gwen about her base stats and her ratios. But I really don't think that has to be the case, and this is just a change that they don't know whether it's going to work or not, and it shows that in the numbers, because this was even more than the Season 14 change. But here, we're going to lock in the unofficial pentakill, and that will be the game. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry again about the doom and gloom, but I just really want this to be shown that this is a very bad change that will ruin the champion if it goes through anyways guys like sub comment something about a bell and i'll leave you guys to the end game stats later Just like the good old times. Sweet, simple, and out of control.